Welcome to this video on using Cisco Unified Intelligence Center, or COIC, version 11.5. This video on report views is one in a multi-part series introducing the COIC 11.5 product. In this video, we will cover the creation of new report views as well as e editing existing views. Make sure you check out all the other videos in our series, including Getting Started, Thresholds and Filters, Permalinks, Using Dashboards, and User Groups and Collections. Let's now dive into 11.5 and look at Report Views. Starting with the home page and logging in as the COIC Super User or Super Administrator, the default user uh, deployed at InStore. Let's go to the reports link where we see just our stock reports. Now, in order for us to manipulate, edit and, and create stock or report views, it's first necessary that we perform a save as on a particular report and manipulate that report. We cannot change the views on any stock report. It's also a best practice to cluster these custom reports or new reports under a new folder. So let's see how we can do that by going first to the New button, clicking on Folder. Let's give our folder a name. Acme Reports and click Save. And there is our new folder. Now we're going to use the Call Type Historical All Fields Report as the basis for this demonstration. One easy way to find that report is to type the word call in the search box up here and just click the little search magnifying glass. And lo and behold, all of the relevant um, reports associated with that search criteria appear, including our call type historical all fields. This is the guy we want to edit. So let's go to the action columns, click save as give this report a name and we'll call it service level. We need a location for this report and we're going to put it in our new Acme Reports folder. So let's refresh this screen, open up the Acme Reports folder and there is our service level report. This then is the report that we want to edit so again, we'll go to the Actions column, find the Edit button, which opens up the Edit Wizard. You'll notice there are three sections uh, in this wizard, Basic Information, Managing Views and Thresholds, and Managing Filters. We'll deal with just managing views in this video. We'll leave thresholds and filters to a later uh, session. Let's give our report a version number, call it 1.0, and click Next. Now here are all the existing views associated with the, this report, including the default view call type historical all fields. We could in fact edit any of these views, but let's select this default view and edit it. And to do that, we'll go to the Actions column, and click Edit View. Here we see all of the fields associated with the report definition that is the basis of this stock report, now our new report, and of those fields, the selected values which are rendered for this report. Now you can see here that there is a lot of information associated with this report much of which we don't want if we're really only just looking for a service level report. In fact, anything after this average speed of answer can really go. Now, there are two headers here, uh, tasks and completed tasks. We can ident identify those as headers by the little plus mask here. So we want to get rid of each of those. So let's click up here and the he click the header and go up and click the minus button under header which in fact removes that header. 
Let's do the same with completed tasks, which removes that header. Now let's uh, set about deleting or removing everything other than the, fir the first one, two, three, four, five entries ending at the average speed of answer. We can select all of these, starting with max queues and scroll down. And hit the shift button and select them all and just move them back to the available screen. So now we see we've only left with call type name, date time, service level, abandoned with in service le level and average speed of answer. Let's click save. And finish and open our service level report. We'll need to complete the filter dialog. We'll save this as the default along the way. Click next. For our key criteria, we will in fact select all the reports by clicking this double button, click next. And we won't worry at this point about any field filters. Click run. And our report is rendered. Now you might look at this and see a couple of things not quite right with this report. One is we've got a lot of wasted space here in the date, time and the service level real estate, taking up a lot of screen space. Uh, and also the font is just a little bit small. So let's see if we can do something about both of those situations. Let's go back to the edit view button. And we'll see here we can indeed change the font from a 10, let's make it say a 14. And we said that that date time field was a little bit large. So let's click on this pencil and change the column width here from 130 down to say, let's, well, let's make it 50. Click done. The other one was the service level, which was also a little large. So let's click on it. It is 70. Let's remove turn it down, but not quite so much. Let's make it say 30. Click done. Done again. And hopefully you can now see that our report is starting to look a little bit smarter. We've been able to reduce the real estate for the date time and the service level columns. Uh, and we've been able to increase the font to make it much more readable. Now let's say our customer, the person we're building this report for, uh, had another request and that is to, um, to combine the service level, the abandoned within service level, and the average speed of answer all under a heading called performance data. Let's see how we can do that. Back to the tools, edit view, and let's add a header from this little green plus box. Our header is created and we need to give it a name and we'll call our header as requested. performance data and click done. Now performance data right now is sitting right up the front of the report with nothing in it. Uh, we want to put it further down in the report where it belongs and we want to associate the service level abandoned within service level uh, and other data under that performance data header. So let's first move it down by selecting it and moving the down button once, twice. So now it sits after the date time. We now want to move the service level, the abandoned within service level, and the average speed of answer under that 
performance data header. Simply select, move it up, select, move it up, select, and move it up. Now you'll notice each time I did that, these um, entries indented slightly indicated in fact, in fact that they are now part of this performance data header. Let's click Done. And our report is now starting to look uh, fairly smart. We've got our date time uh, column about right, our performance data header is combining service level, abandoned within service level, and average speed of answer. However, for us to have a look at how these particular service level values and other values are derived, uh, it's necessary for us to expand a little plus on each of the call types to see the date time segmentation for each of those entries. Let's say in this particular report, we don't want to have to do that. Um, we just want to see this particular value each time we run the report. The reason that we're seeing the view that we are is because we have a grouping going on uh, around the call type name. To fix the view to the way we would like it, it's simply a means of ungrouping. To do that, we'll go back to the tools, select the group by link, and rather than have a first level grouping by call type name, we'll simply take that out and say no grouping please. Click Save. And now our report is perhaps longer to look at and maybe grouping is what you want to do. But if you don't, this is the way in which you would do it. Okay, so this then is how we would set about editing a particular report view. Notice when we do that though, uh, very importantly, let me open this up again. that that call type historical all fields view uh, has in fact gone uh, and it's been left now uh, just with with this new view. We don't see that same view again. And in fact, um, we probably should have renamed it uh, away from call type historical all fields just to avoid confusion. So let's, uh, let's just do that. So let's go to edit, edit view, and we'll call it service level. And click done. And this view we've been dealing with is now called service level. Now suppose you didn't want to do that. Suppose uh, you wanted a new view uh, and you wanted to retain all of the existing views in a particular report. Let's see how we might go about that. First, we will close this view. Select the service level report itself and click the Actions button, Edit. Again, we see the editing wizard that we're used to. Let's click through this first basic page to the manage views and thresholds and now instead of editing a particular view we'll create a new view. That view will be a grid view. We should be used to this screen having seen it just before to edit the existing view. Because this is a new view, there are, of course, no values associated uh, with it at this time. Let's make this a call volume report. So let's in fact, call it call volume. Uh, and in this view, we're only going to be interested in call volumes associated with the service. So we'll first, of course, select the call types. Then maybe the calls answered, calls handled and calls offered. Now, clearly I'm not taking a great deal of care with this. I just want to demonstrate the process rather than create a purely practical report. So we've given it 
the name called volume. We've selected four values. We'll go back and create a font size of 14 and click Save for this view. <clears throat> so here we see now our call volume view, view added to the list of views. Uh, it did not overwrite or remove the service level view uh, that we were working on previously. So let's just click Finish. Open up our service level report. Save this so if, unless we make any changes, we don't have to run through this process again. And click Run. Now that should look familiar. In fact, it's the earlier report uh, that we were looking at of all of our uh, call types and service levels. And that's because we have this set as the default view. Let's take a look, though, at our call volume report that we just created. And here, against each particular call type, is the list of calls answered, calls handled, and calls offered. So we have created an additional view or an additional report. So hopefully that tells you something of the way in which editing and creating call views works. We will look at thresholds and filters in a later video. For now, uh, thanks for watching and uh, be sure to come back and watch the additional videos in this series.